Hello, back again. I know uh, a lot of people were kind of expecting me to be here a bit earlier today, but um, no, I'm going to do a slightly different format for today. So not quite so early. Uh, going to be covering the Lost Mine of Fandalva, and um, this type of video is like a look behind the scenes for a dungeon master. It required quite a bit of uh, preparation, so um, bear with me. Okay, so the sound is working fine. You'll let me know if the sound or the video isn't working correctly. I will try to keep an eye on the chat as I go. Um, you will find the start time for this video down in the description for anybody who wants to skip past everything with the live stream and get straight to it. Uh, the start time will be down there. Just give me a bit of time to be able to post it in there, okay? Now, normally with my live streams, as I present everything first, and then I open it up for questions and answers. Uh, this is not this. That's not the uh, the format for today. This is behind the dungeon master screen. So what it means is I'm actually doing dungeon master prep. So I'm actually physically doing some sort of dungeon master prep and explaining the things that I'm doing, um, so that you there's no sort of just talk about it. I'm actually doing it, okay? And we're going to be re preparing the uh, Cragmore Castle hide up. Thank you, Aaron. Okay, so we're going to get straight into this. As quick as we can, uh, quick intro, and then we're done. And uh, away we go. Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Wheeler, and today I want to show you what it's like to look behind the Dungeon Master screen. This is really a look at what I do, or what a Dungeon Master might do, right before their session or weeks before their session. Sometimes we take more time or less time. I'm dealing with a location for today. Uh, this is for the Lost Mine of Fandelva, so a dungeon master guide you might say this is. And we're gonna break apart and work with Cragmore Hideout. It's the first map that we are provided with in the Lost Mine of Fandelva. So we're gonna take that map, and I've taken a map that has no labels on it, so it's not numbered. You can get this off the internet, it's not that difficult to do, to do, so you shouldn't have any trouble finding it. I then, fortunately, I have somebody, dear Jesus, thank you dear Jesus, who provided me with all of the broken up segments. All the segments have been broken up into pieces, six of them, so that I can then print them out and then cut them out and put them together. And so that's what I'm going to do, is I'm going to show you what I've got uh, in terms of getting hold of the files. That shouldn't actually be very difficult. I would suggest going and checking out my Facebook page. That's really where I put most of my files, and you'll find most of that sort of stuff there. Okay, let's go straight into the screen. So it's broken up into six pieces. Now, you can't see six pieces because I'm going to be working here. This is, thankfully, been broken up into bits. I have to thank my brother. Uh, Sam for printing them out. He had went through a lot of hassle. This is water color paper. So it's quite a lot thicker. It's almost like cardboard. And I don't know if you can necessarily tell, but I have all of the different pieces and locations on here. So I've got the first entrance, then sort of after that, we're little, this is where all the wolves are. And then after that, just, just hang on, I'll see if I can shuffle that out of the way. Okay. This here is the over the overbridge. The bridge is here. And then we have, I believe this is where um, Yimmick and the goblins are. And I've got the, uh, this is the, the pools of water where you release the dam and it floods the location. And this is the last location, which is Clark. This is where Clark is hanging out. So this is sort of the, the chute that you can clamber up the back entrance as such. So I've numbered them all, made sure because there was a few attempts, you know, some of these look blank on one side, but honestly we had to reprint a couple of times to get it to work. It's, it's not actually a particularly easy process. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them out. Now what I did is I numbered them and then I used a pen gauging when I sort of put them together, figuring out where I needed to cut. So you'll notice the black marks, those are sort of where my cut lines need to be. Some of them are really simple and easy to do, and some of them not so easy. Grab yourself a steel ruler. I've got myself a relatively sharp knife. Uh, I might wind up cutting myself, so you will have lots of fun if I start doing that. I'm going to start cutting out all the pieces. Neck, neck, 
Betty, Betty. I was thinking about getting all of the uh, maps printed out um, on a on ones. I don't know what ones is, but um, I suppose what you mean is getting it printed out on a much larger piece of paper or card. I mean, you can. I don't think that's an issue. Underneath, if you're wondering what's going on, this is a um, a cutting board. So if you're wondering if I'm cutting straight into the table, certainly hope not. Certainly hope not, because that was not the plan. I have a scalpel. And when I've done this, I should be able to put all the pieces together and make it possible for one, I don't have to worry about my fog of war, because I can just lay down one section and reveal one section at a time rather than multiple sections. Does that cut through? Let's just trim that off. And I know a lot of people are concerned about that sort of thing. Hi Jackie, how's it going? Um, that printout would have would have helped me in my running my run. I drew my maps on graph paper. Yeah, well, I did the same thing. Um, the only reason I am cutting this out right now, to be completely frank, is I run a YouTube channel, and a lot of people ask me about the Lost Mine of Fandelva, and they have been. I mean, the people have been asking me to do a video that sort of shows the layout of um, Cragmore. Um, hideout and other locations and sort of how that they would they would deal with that and I, I I kind of get I understand where they're coming from makes a lot of sense um, you want a little bit of extra help and so this is hopefully going to be make it possible so I am just going to cut off that side there first I think uh, and I'm going to be careful my, my mat my cutting mat's not hugely large and when I was looking at this, when I, all the pieces were done, I was like, there is a bit of overlap. So there, are, when you're laying it out, it's going to be going to require a little bit of planning. But that's all fine. I uh, I know of people who have drawn out this map um, full full scale, and it's taken them a long, long time. <laughs> really difficult. Nick Betty, yeah, I drew this one and it looked horrible. Okay. Yeah, but so I, I wouldn't give yourself a hard time just because you drew it and it didn't look that great and you were hoping it would look like the map. You know, I think the fact that Wizards of the Coast is trying to make maps a lot simpler in their design. I know people think that they're being cheated when that happens, but um, it does put less pressure on a dungeon master to try to produce high quality, well drawn maps. And not everybody can do that, right? So I wouldn't concern yourself with that quite so much. Uh, this knife has been cutting all sorts of things recently. So it's, the card is pretty thick. I mean, that's part of the problem, right? Okay, so. And I've got some scissors. We'll just trim off this. Otherwise, it's going to get in the way. You know, we'll get lots of funny little noises going on while I'm doing this there we go that's out of the way so yeah I am keeping an eye on the chat for those of you who want to have a chat along with me while I do this as I said um, I will uh, I'll be cutting and marking and doing various things but you are welcome to ask questions and give feedback tell me how things went for you hi Brandon yeah today's been all right it's not too bad. I had somebody um, contact me about a job, which is all good. I don't know if I'll get the job, but um, it's nice to know that uh, my applications are are getting somewhere. At least, although it seems to be the same job, and I think they asked exactly the same questions they asked the first time. So <laughs> I don't know who's doing the interviewing process, but uh, it's a little bit odd. I would just trust that there's a good reason. Okay, and now I can just make out that line, and we'll just mark that down and cut that out like so. Now if you have a specific question that you want me to not miss out on, you go hashtag question, okay, that is the easiest way to get me, and if you feel like you've got plenty of money, then Super Chat will definitely pop up and I'll notice that for sure. But uh, hashtag questions perfectly fine. All right, so did I get that cut at the end there? Just trim that off just a little bit more. Okay. All right, so that's the first one. 
So that's map six. So we'll put that over there. We'll take this and lock this out of the way. Grab the next one. Uh, this is map five. And I'm pretty sure when I was looking at this, I lined up and tried to figure out where I needed to cut, where I didn't need to cut. Hi, Matt. How's it going? Bolton, how's it going too? How you doing? Did you say you did all this in Photoshop? No, my brother did it in Photoshop. Um, I couldn't have ever figured it out myself. If I had tried to do it, it would have been a disaster. Um, my brother said it was not very easy. He said it, it was actually quite difficult. Um, I believe, dear Jesus, the files were created for printing onto a4, which makes a lot of sense, so it's automatically pre-programmed in. But I don't know if that will solve a lot of your problems in terms of the files. And like I said, I'll put the files on Facebook probably sometime fairly shortly. And obviously not while I'm doing this, that's not going to happen. But there. Okay. I've got my first cut in there. And I use my scissors just to trim it out there. And just get rid of that. That'll help just a little bit more. Uh, the land graphable. Just ran this a couple of weeks ago. Now I'm studying the red brand hideout. Awesome. Okay. I'm supposedly going to be in a position to do uh, the map for the red brand hideout as well. But I'm not going to promise anything. Because uh, the last time, <laughs> last time I went and saw my brother about this, I, I, he did not seem terribly happy, um, and I watched him fighting with his printer. Uh, obviously, you could take it to a professional printer. I mean, I guess that's a, an, an option. I guess if you've got plenty of cash floating around. Um, there we go. Big kid, how's it going? I printed and taped together, okay, by the time I got to Thunder Tree, I switched to using Google Slides and having it on a TV. I totally understand, man. Totally. <laughs> it's a lot of extra work, right? That's, that's, the, that's the issue. As soon as you try to have maps that they can move around on, I, do you know, when I did this, I drew all of this out on a Chessex vinyl battle mat as we went. I would just draw it out, uh, particularly if there was a combat. Otherwise, I was drawing everything in smaller scale on a piece of paper. Um, and I got pretty good at doing that. <laughs> Took a little while, but it got there. Okay. Aaron's in the room. I can see that now. Okay, so I'm looking for hashtag questions. No, so far, nothing. Well, that's good. That's good news. Oh, all right. Let's see if I can. Where's the other knife? I was cutting rubber with this the other day, and that may have made the blade a lot blunter. Otherwise, um, this cardboard is just really thick. It's not really cardboard, eh? It's watercolor paper. So, okay, Fred. You've got it? Yes. Yes, we do. We've got it. It's, it's come free. It's free and easy now. Free and easy. Very nice. Awesome. <clears throat> you switched to using Google Slides and DIY Roll20 Roll version. I finally brought battle mats and that is the best. <laughs> yeah, yeah. rewritable battle mats are really um, awesome. I, I find them probably the most useful um, that's not to say that I didn't uh, carry around pre-printed maps a lot because I had a whole bunch of them, but, um, that was a mistake, wasn't it? Considering my past. But now I have got them back again because they reprinted the Dungeons and Dragons tactical battle maps or tactical maps for reincarnated. That, uh, that review I did is based off an actual product and you can use those if you want, which is awesome. But then again, it doesn't account for if you've got a predetermined adventure, you really need to be able to um, have the map look like the actual map in the adventure, right? So that's not so helpful. It's fine if you're using creating your own stuff, or you don't actually have a map for a location in the adventure. 
But other than that, not quite so helpful. Uh, did I get through? Did it go through? It almost went through. This is some hard stuff. This card's really, really tough. My brother said that this would print a lot um, cleaner because it's from watercolour paper and cause him less hassle, which I thought was amazing because considering how much trouble it gave him. But it's got a really nice surface to it. It is very smooth and it has produced a good finish. It's just a matter of whether Fred can cut him out with making a mess or not. Okay. Okay, so this, you can see, should fit together roughly. Now, how have I got to overlay it? I've got to overlay a little bit here to make it work. Um, da, 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 da. Positioning there. Okay, so I probably could have cut it off roughly about there, and it would have been fine. I'm not going to worry about doing that because it's actually going to be probably good if I can have something to connect it with underneath. So, yeah. So now I have a section of the map. It sort of lines up, which is all good. So I've got to keep going, make my way through the rest of this. Uh, no, no name, zero, one, da, 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 da. You need a, um, a rotary rotary cutter like uh, what um, scrapbook um, bookers use. I, I don't know that I, I do. I, the scalpel would have been fine. It's just blunt. It's been used for other things and it doesn't have a new, new blade in it. Okay, so let's cut off over here. <sighs> Aldrich um, Fair, Far. Uh, that's the way I did it, um, but I'm in a first time DM and coming from board gaming, surprised that uh, it makes sense. But not for the lazy DM. No, no, lazy DM don't do it this way. No. If you want to, if you want to do it the lazy way, this is not lazy way. This is this is going to take a lot of time and effort. I am doing it as I said because I am probably going to reuse them. Um, I've been told that. Uh, I think somebody said that they wanted me to play out every single encounter. Well, why am I using that blade? I'm using this blade again. This is the one that's been causing me trouble. Get out of here. Come back here. There we go. All right, that's better. Okay, so we'll cut down through here. I kind of actually, the, the precision knife, I do re, um, actually sort of regret getting. It is not quite as heavy a um, knife as I would prefer. I, I would be using my Stanley Classic because it's got a heavy blade, it cuts through pretty much anything, but it's got a blunt blade in it, and I don't think I've got any spare blades right now, so it's not going to be very helpful. No, that's not quite cut through. Let's do that again. I don't know how... How am I supposed to even figure out how to make this all fit on one screen at some point? There's six pieces to put together. It's going to be a mission, absolute mission to make that work. <laughs> um, glad to hear about the job inquiry. Yeah, Aaron, that's good news, eh? It hasn't equated to our job, but um, at least it's better than nothing. Okay, so now how do I want to do this? I want to go, I think I want to go that way. Where's my steel ruler? Don't use a plastic ruler, it won't survive. Plastic rulers are for when you're playing at school. Steel rulers of people for actually have to cut something hard and uh, stiff out. There we go. And line that up. Ah. So which section am I cutting out? This is where the goblins are, Yemek is. Is that, uh, I think that's area six. I can't remember off the top of my head. I think it is area six. Yay, look at that, that's good news. Okay, so we'll bring it forward a little bit. Hug it into the body, hug it into the body. And hopefully my head's not in the way. 
I'm having to lean over. Now, if you're wondering why the sound isn't very good, look, if you are doing something like this and it's live, there is no way you can control the sound because my voice is bouncing off the table. Okay, did I get it? Yay! Awesome! Good news! All right, I'm going to cut that free because it's starting to get in the way now. So we're, we're almost halfway through the process. Uh, what's that, Boltan? Well, Fed, if you don't find a job you um um job like you um a, a, a job you like, I'm sure you can find something here. Yeah, right. I doubt anyone would complain um, about another local DM. Well, I'm in New Zealand. People don't really make money being a dungeon master in New Zealand. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't really work that way. And, and um, it sounds all good, but uh, to be to be honest, I would prefer not to wind up turning this into a, a, a job if I can help it. I've done it before with other things and it didn't work out really well. Anyway, that is that section. Um, so this is where the goblins are. So that's number, that's through, is that number four or four? Section four, yep. We're on to section three, We're going backwards. So this is what had happened. We had all sorts of problems. This is the back side. This is the correct side. Made sure I had to, had to actually um, number them, otherwise I'd get them confused. Yeah, I have a Facebook group. Yes, it's a Facebook group. A whole bunch of uh, time back, I talked to everybody and I said, look, look, do you want a community page of some kind? And people said, yes, we do. And I said, do you want a page or do you want a group? And they decided that actually a, um, a group would be the best way. Okay, Matt, I spotted your question. Well done with the hashtag question. I don't understand why um, why was the um, these maps um, hard to print out. Well, because the the reality is, uh, Matt, is that even if you have the files and somebody else has broken up the files for you, putting them through um, Photoshop, blowing them up, they were sort of scaled um, partly, but. Uh, they had to go back through Photoshop to actually get them to the right position. So if you don't have Photoshop, it's not so easy. And for whatever reason, the Epson printer just kept spitting out the card. So that's why. Um, if you've got a really good printer and you don't have any problems with that sort of thing, that's awesome. But uh, I had a lot of hassles, as it happens. Um, the tell Fatel, uh, Fatel, I'm not going to go any further, I can't figure it out. Um, Fred, I hope you are doing well and life is getting better. Um, happy to see all the videos. Yep, um, greetings from USA. Minnesota, M MN, is that Minnesota? I'm not sure. Or Ma is it Mainz? It might be Mainz. Um, yeah, no, thanks. I do appreciate that. Uh, do -do -do -do. So now, how, how am I going to do this? I'm going to, I'm going to go this way. Try and put the, the cut on the outside. You want your blade on the waist side, right? Wait, blade on the waist side. So if you make a mistake, you can't make a mistake. Really, you shouldn't be making a mistake. <laughs> that's the that's the idea. Each square is five foot. Yep, yeah, Peter, Pete, that's right. Each square is five foot. So I'm doing the bridge now. Ah. And we're cutting through. I think that's got it. Yep, that does. And we'll do it again. I'm make sure I keep an eye on where my marks are. I think most of the marks are pretty simple, which is excellent news. <laughs> uh, dear. Dolphus, how's it going? No, you didn't miss the blood. I haven't. I'm not bleeding yet, though. I am trying not to cut towards myself. It was half the issue, right? Half the issue. But we are on um, section three out of six. So I've, this will be the 
Okay, two more after this one. All right, let's get rid of this piece because this is going to get in the way. Brandon, is it me or are the maps for D&D rather cramped? Yeah, they can be. Um, but not all of them are. You'll find that some of the maps they make are so large it's impossible to draw them. Um, if you're playing something like Storm King's Thunder, the maps are horrifically large because you're dealing with giants. So, and drawing them out is just a pain. I, I know that my, um, I know that uh, currently is it John Paul who is dungeon mastering for me, and Simon who did uh, Storm King's Thunder, just got sick and tired of drawing maps because the areas were so large, just didn't make any sense. <coughs> um, Aaron, question: What scale is the grid on this map? Okay, so the the scale, the, the squares are one inch or 25 millimeters. So it's been printed out to the right scale to put miniatures on. That's the, that's the whole point of all of this. Otherwise I would not bother. The idea is that I can use it to stick miniatures on and at some point at a later date, I will do a video showing you guys the layout where all the miniatures are and sort of explain stuff do a follow-up video for Cragmore hideouts and break it all down since that seems to be very popular and is that cut through no it's not it's just a little bit it's just hanging on there and she's free free and easy okay there we go so um, in terms of connecting this, let's do a quick sort of link up so you can sort of see what's going on. Now the easiest, where's, where's the easiest way to link this little sucker? Um, oh, it's going to be this end, isn't it? It's got to be this end, I'm pretty sure. This has to connect on to here, like that. Now where is it, where is it, where is it, where is it? So it's going to connect about there. That means that there's a small section that I'll be missing um, that didn't include get included in the in the, the printout. So there's just this little section here that's missing, which is a little bit unfortunate because I don't have a, a filling section for that. And yeah, so there's a little just a tiny piece missing, but that's the link up for it. So did I put it in the screen or did I put it halfway off the screen? I think pretty much halfway off the screen, didn't I? So that's sort of roughly what it's going to look like. Okay. Cool calls. Brandon, I know I a DM on Roll20 that makes at least uh, 2000 a month. Yeah, 2000 a month I wouldn't be able to live on. Um, sounds like a lot of money, but yeah. I couldn't, couldn't do it. Not even in New Zealand. Um, well, actually, New Zealand's actually quite expensive to live in, to be, to be honest. Which is why I've got my veggie garden going. Okay, so here we go. So let's cut this section off. And bam, there. I'm always worried though about turning my hobbies into a job and it winding up no longer being fun too. Scott, uh, NZ is home of the Shire. It should be a D and D mecca. Yeah, but it's not a it's not a money mecca, my friend. New Zealanders don't have a particularly um, high income. So being able to pay for somebody to play Dungeons and Dragons is, is it's not really, you know, we don't have professional dungeon masters who get paid in New Zealand. That's an American thing. Okay, all right, so there are lots of ple people playing that just, yeah. All right, so this is going to go there, we'll cut through that section there and we're on our on our way. Um, what's that Aaron question? Uh, you have recently kicked your content into high high gear, is that because you starting a patron or board? Boredom, boredom, we've got nothing else to do. The only income I've got is coming out of uh, YouTube and the um, other things that I do, the, pa um, the patrons and which isn't very much either in the affiliate marketing. So really that's the, the reason, is um, no other money coming any, anywhere. So, But I've been told that live streams all very well, but people would prefer to have uh, a lot more edited content. So you'll see a lot more edited content showing up rather than just 
for live streams. And I'm, I mean, I put up a poll that I was talking about uh, Twitch TV and YouTube and how people would respond to me using Twitch TV. Um, and I am certainly considering very seriously restreaming services. So that means streaming on Twitch TV and YouTube at the same time. Um, the problem is you can't do that without paying money these days. So, and that's that's really where it's coming coming from. And I don't want to have branding stuck all over the video or watermarks that sort of ruin the, the, the viewing process. So I'm trying to decide who I will use for that. So that's what's going on with that. Okay. <clears throat> Matt, so true. Okay. Um, Nick, better. What's that? Have you had had a go at uh, 3D printing? No, I've told people before, 3D printing in New Zealand is is not cheap. It's actually a very, very expensive process. People don't do 3D printing unless they're a professional who do this as their job and they absolutely must do it. Um, the, the filament, the plastic, or the, the plastic filament's really expensive. More expensive than just going and buying boxed miniatures in New Zealand, which I know sounds ridiculous, but it's true. Okay, so that's going to get out of the way. Stay over there. <clears throat> Bill Rich, question. Um, brought the, the highest files from the highest, the highest files from the artist. Um, did all the work your brother did. Worked 100%. Um, want to make the files PDF, 25mm scale, public for the other DMs, concerned about artists' copyright and ideas. Yes, don't do it. I wouldn't do it. All of that seems like a really bad idea. Yep. Um, and actually, that, that's a good point. I'm not sure that I will put this up on uh, on the Facebook group because really, those those files somebody had to put together and create, and that's his livelihood. So um, yeah, maybe that's not going to be the case. Maybe you just go and see Mike Shaley. Is it Mike Shaley? And you just download his images and then you can print them out. Because they'll all be set up so that you can do that. He will have figured out how to do that. He'll be he'll know that people want to do something like that. And I'm pretty sure I put the, the web link for his his uh, maps down in the description to this video. Okay, so this is the front entrance. And this is going to be linked up. Where's, my, where's the front? Have I got the front yet? No, I'm still cutting out the front. This should be linked up here with this though. So let's just see how it fits together. Uh, does it fit together correctly? So where am I supposed to be connecting? I'm supposed to be connecting about there. Is that it? No, 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 no. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. Uh, watch the contour thread there. That, that looks like it. Yep, I feel like that's pretty close. That's pretty close there. There we go. And that little piece over there just needs to maneuver just a smidge. Okay, so that that's what we've got in terms of a linked up map um, for that section. So it's looking it's looking it's looking good. It's gonna be a lot of fun, I have to say. Should be very entertaining. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's alright, no problems. Um now, I'm falling behind on the on the chat, and I don't want to fall behind because this is supposed to be behind the Dungeon Master screen. So I'm going to go through this, the, the chat really fast. Um, I do still have one more of these to cut out, um, but we will sort of really just quickly just make sure I've caught up with everybody. Uh, we've talked about 3D printing, da 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 da. Matt's talking about Pippin. I don't know what all that's going on. Okay, off to New Zealand. <laughs> Scott. Uh, we're having a problem with maps being too large to draw out effectively uh, when running under mountain. Yes, that will bob that'll be the case. After we got past first level, I went to YouTube and saw some online tool sets that uh, would do would do it justice. Okay, good to know, because I would like to run that adventure. I just don't know if I will be getting to do so. It always comes down to really what players want to do. Um, Ulrich. Um, shiny pieces makes my players enjoy the game so much more. Um, Theatre of the Mind would develop a n nightmare of agony, board gamers, murder hobos. Look, I use Theatre of the Mind at the right time. There's a good time to do it and there's a bad time to do it. And with 
players who do not like theatre of the mind, bad time to do it. Uh, with a simple encounter where the chances are they're just going to butcher everything anyway, duh, who cares? I wouldn't even put it out. I know players don't like me doing it, but I still have the miniatures and maps there just in case. But I will do theatre of the mind when it makes sense. Um, Diata, yeah, edited content, that's great. Yeah, it's 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 fine, but the, you'll find that the edited content for my channel, it can take anywhere from a week to six or eight months to see a video if if I do edited content. Um, just because, and I don't know a lot of people don't understand this, how long it takes to actually process it um, and go through it. And and this and that is taking shortcuts. I take a lot of shortcuts nowadays, uh, shortcuts that a lot of other people don't do. There's a reason why the big channels do maybe one or two videos, usually one video per week. It's just sheer amount of work. And the reason I do so much live streaming is because it's easier. You'll find that uh, Dawn Forge Cast is live streaming, and then he cuts his live streams down. It's a smart move. I used to do that. And then I found out that YouTube would occasionally botch it up, and so for I would um, I would have issues. Um, it's good when YouTube captures the uh, the video because they process it faster than I can. B but there are drawbacks, particularly if their system goes haywire, and I've had a few occasions when that's happened. So I have another process, which is a um, a two video process. So you get the the live stream as is captured by YouTube. And then when I get time, I do an edited version, and then I release the edited version. Right now, the edited versions are going straight to the patrons, and they see them well before you guys do, um, and then they will get released to the general public um, later on. But I have been told that uh, I should either take down or unlist the, the live streams once the edited version's gone up. Um, and we'll see how that works. <coughs> Okay, all right, we're doing all right for time, so that's good news. Aaron, I, uh, I like watching the live streams, but can only watch them at work and, and twice as banned. Yeah, yeah, well, I don't make sense. So I, I won't see your live streams anymore, but I'm uh, one person, so do what's best for your channel. Yeah, it's, it's cool. I, I don't expect you to re-watch stuff that's already gone up. It's, that would be ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. It's just that some people prefer um, prefer to be able to interact with me, and some people can't, and um, or aren't really worried about that sort of thing. They just want to watch the video, and that's it. Okay, back to our map cutting. We're almost done. This is the last one. Oh, oh I think I might have moved the camera. Just a fraction with that one. It went straight into the tripod and it went boop. And you might have seen like a little bit of a, a vibration take place. <clears throat> okay. Moving on. Last little bit. This is the last piece to cut off. Isn't that good news? How long has it taken me? About 40, well, roughly 40. I mean, I've been talking as well. I've been talking with you guys. Um, so maybe 40 minutes to cut all the bits out. To be fair, this is hard. This is hard paper. This is tough. Tough to get through. Anyway, last of the cuts. Oh, oh, that was that was difficult. That was difficult. I have pieces everywhere. Everywhere. Okay, so let's link it up and see what the front entrance looks like in comparison. There's no way I can link all of them up. Um, right now because I'd have to change my camera view but let's have a look and see what it looks like in the front section so this is the front entrance and I think I'm gonna have to overlay overlay it that way let's overlay it this way okay so where is it gonna link up I feel like that's about there about about there so there is roughly what it looks in the front. Yeah, it's not too bad. I'm um, just gonna make sure the 
Use the, use the squares, Fred. Just line the squares up and you should be fine, right? Lines and squares, lines and squares. Now, why is that? Uh, I feel like that's slightly out of alignment just there. Now, there'll be a reason for that. And the reason, I don't know. Maybe it's just slightly out of alignment when it was printed. Let's just flip it over. I'll put it on the other side instead. If I can find a, a matching feature about there and see if it'll line up. Ooh, this piece is actually more difficult to line up than the other ones. I didn't expect that to happen. I thought I thought that would be not an issue, but um, apparently getting it to just line up exactly. Okay, so there, 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 there. If angle that a little bit. Angle. Oh, maybe it's the angle. If I change the angle, will that help? Yeah, so this piece doesn't quite match up as well as the rest of them. It's going to be slightly out compared to the rest. So that's about, I think that's about as close as I can get. Okay, so um, so this is looking behind the um, Dungeon Master screen. I'm going to go through the chat real fast and then I'm going to um, just, oh there's a question there so I better get to questions. Um, uh, so, Ulrich, I think I answer, I'm um, talk to your Theatre of Mind um, comment. Uh, yeah, edited content, that's great. Now we talked about that. Aaron, I like watching the live streams, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we've got that. Um, Twitch, not twice. Yeah, no. No, I don't watch on Twitch and on YouTube. That would be ridiculous. But um, restreaming, I think that's um, probably a go-to in terms of uh, just, re just stream on two two platforms at the same time okay Dolphus question will you be showing us four or five um, PCs running through this map one day um, probably not five um, if I do four it would have to be one location at a time if enough people in the chat I know there's 21 of you there if enough people say Fred we want a breakdown and run the encounter for each location as a separate video because I'm not going to do it as one big long video if you say, yes, that's what we want, we want a broken down encounter um, for each, each this location, then I, I will I will do it. Um, but it needs to be at least three or four people, otherwise I just don't know that it's much much point, okay? Um, Neckbeater, uh, you can stream both at the same time. Yes, you can, with re Restream, yeah. I'm not going to use Restream because of the branding, they stick all over the video, so you would see watermarks everywhere, which is not good. Um, I'm thinking about using uh, Caster, and they're a bit cheaper as well. Uh, Matt, Fred, maps look awesome. Sorry it was such a hassle. No, you don't have to be sorry. It's just how it is, you know. Sometimes we have different experiences in terms of what's going on. Um, Tasty Basie, how do you unveil the map as PCs move through? Well, you can lay, you could stick it all together and just put paper over it and then move the paper out of the way to, un, un you know, just lay out normal um, photocopy paper, blank photocopy paper, or just blue tack it down in place, or just add the pieces in as you go. I think that might be a bit more difficult to do. But if you've got space to set everything up in, a, in advance so that they can't see, then great. Um, Richard, what do you got here? Tasty. I just used pieces of paper. It needed to cut them to fit. Yeah, cut them to fit. Absolutely. Volk TL. Oh, fun. I made my own out of 8 by 11 sheets. Good stuff. Cool. Uh, Richard, uh, you do it for all the maps, Volk? Okay, Ulrich. Uh, why this is so sweet? Covering the unveiling sections of uncovered areas, uh, hint to the areas. This method only shows openings and the maps grow as the players explore. Yep, tasty basic. Doodle -doodle -doodle. Yep, you guys are talking about that. So unveiling. Uh, the fog of war seems to be something that people really want to talk about. I'm, I'm not quite sure... Uh, why but that's that's cool I, I know it is an issue particularly if you print everything out you want, don't want them to see the whole location right Richard yeah it takes forever I used uh, 2 by um, 22 by 28 inch paper with uh, 1 inch grid to it took me weeks to hand draw it yes it would uh, absolutely I can't I, I, which is why I have avoided trying to do that myself because I knew how time consuming it would be um, 
uh, what else here? Wave Echo Cave is like seven foot by five foot. Yeah, it's a massive location. Tasty Basie. Are these just printed out? These are just printed out. There's no way I can draw like this. They're printed out, right sized, and then cut out. Volk. Um, I did some, uh, some of the Vandalva maps. I used um, Pixel and lined up the inch squares to 60 bits, then one sec then one section um, section to the map and printed these out like my um, Mr. Hatman is doing. Yeah, that's right, Mr. Hatman. I'm the Hatman. <laughs> Daisy, Daisy. Sorry about the um, the dumb questions. Not a dumb question. Yeah, ask the questions. I'll let you know if it's a dumb question. It's not a dumb question. I never played with anyone, but my wife and neither of us really know what what we're doing. That's all right. No problems. Um, Nick, better. Ah. Wouldn't, wouldn't be bad. Okay, look, so that's it. That is sort of behind the scenes. Um, yes, you will eventually see me using these maps in, in uh, future videos. So um, don't, uh, don't think uh, or despair that that won't happen because it most certainly will happen. I have plenty of videos if you are interested on the Lost Mine of Fandalva and I have uh, videos for Dungeon Masters and players. So you're welcome to help, um, help yourself to those if you're really interested. Um, I also have a Patreon page, so you can support me, so I keep doing stuff like this, and it would appreciate would appreciate that. I have affiliate link uh, affiliate links to the book depository and Amazon, where you can go and buy stuff online, and I get a small commission. Um, make sure to share, like, and subscribe to the channel. If you haven't subscribed, hit the bell button to be notified when I go live, and I go live a lot, and when I edit new videos, and uh, that does happen as well. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those twenties.